Cheers, guys. Epix 911, welcome to the Thursday, August 24th, 2017 edition of VR News. There were some interesting discussions in the comment section for last night's episode having to do with the topic of exclusivity. Now, there's a lot of you I recognize as being viewers from the beginning of the switch to virtual reality and definitely saw how it gripped some of you with passion that I haven't seen before. Let's just put it that way, in terms of anger, in terms of disappointment. And it's definitely something that virtual reality companies, the game companies, and the technology providers are going to have to get a handle on in terms of marketing because we all have heard the arguments about exclusivity paying developers at a time when organic profits are pretty hard to come by. And I think for the most part, we, we get that. We understand that. What ticks us off is when we're waiting months sometimes for the other platforms to, if ever, see that title. If there was a set period of time, it wouldn't be so bad. That's the sense I get from those comments because some of it was down to not even wanting to support specific brands because of the way they've handled that. And that's where it's going to get tricky for not just the game developers, but the companies themselves. It's how far, how aggressive do you push exclusivity? Because you do run that risk of alienating a big percentage of your customer base. And that was pretty damn evident in the comments yesterday. Let me know your guys' thoughts on that. What is What, what do you think the, the balance is between it being a viable business model to enter into exclusivities is there a length of time? Should there be standard ways to go about that? Or do you just hate it period all the time, even though you've heard the business case for it? Yeah, I'd love to know your guys' thoughts. With that said, let's dive into today's news. First story, let's just say up front, speculation. There's no proof of this. This is based on rumors at this point only. But there is speculation that HTC has engaged with an advisor to study either involving a strategic investor for its VR division, spinning it off, or even selling it completely. Now, when the company was approached with this speculation, of course, they gave the template answer that it's not their policy to discuss matters like that, business matters. Interesting, because the rumor started somewhere. Now, of course, there's always the chance that it starts with the competition, but there's also a chance that it's accurate. That would be interesting, because my first question would be why? That's an interesting, an interesting thought point there. All right, guys, next up, talked about early access as well a few days ago how it can straddle extremes, either incomplete software with development, improving stability, providing fixes, and content to the other side where the game itself is mostly intact, it's pretty damn stable, and the early access takes shape in the form of expanding content, whether it's an RPG adding classes or items, and I've seen examples of both of those, as have we all. Blasters of the Universe appears to be in the mostly complete just adding content variety. So you look at the video, they talk about adding substantial content in the descriptions and other comments surrounding the videos, adding challenges directly. They mention that in the video in terms of the number of challenges added. Weapon types, you can see there's a pretty big variety of weapon types and weapon combinations that you can undergo with your weapons in the game. All of that playing out in be what's best described as an FPS take on Bulletstorm Hell. Now, 
Bulletstorm Hell usually reserved for arcade style vertical space shoot 'em up games. Interesting to see it in an FPS and honestly looks a lot of fun. Besides, any game that can cut cheese in a trailer without blinking for pretty much the full duration of the fart? Yeah, I think I'm in. Game is still in early access on Steam for both Rift and Vive, coming in at $14.99 US. Next up, earlier this year, Facebook appointed Hugo Barra as their new vice president virtual reality, leading the Oculus team forward. Now the company is apparently looking to unify its VR efforts with its other consumer hardware projects, and it's doing some shifting to make that happen. This week, Facebook confirmed to Upload VR that it had appointed Andrew Bosworth to oversee its consumer hardware divisions, including Oculus, as well as devices being built by its Building 8 team. There is a Business Insider report that speculates that the Building 8 team is working on some type of smart speaker device as well as 360 degree camera project or projects. And this story, talk about strange, strange and creepy. And I gotta admit, probably one of the strangest I've seen in a while in virtual reality. It's apparently a virtual reality KFC training simulator slash escape room game. But the article, and I kinda tend to believe this, speculates it may be a PR stunt. If it is, it is a damn good one. And if it's a training simulator, holy hell, would that be fun? Because I've seen some snoozers of uh, of training programs. Now, it is creepy in a really eerie way, but let's play along. Let's assume it was or is a training simulator. It would have to rank as one of the best ever. I mentioned having seen some. I've worked for companies like 7-Eleven when I was a teenager, and I worked for Roto-Rooter, and let me tell you, their training videos, yeah. Boring as all hell, lifted out of the 1960s. That's kind of how it looked. And you had a good chance of falling asleep and missing the subject matter completely. Not the case here. In this, you actually cannot leave the room until you have finished cooking the chicken to the colonel's notoriously, and he was known for this, fussy standards. Love the voiceover acting on here from the Colonel. Love the feel of the escape room portion of the game. It literally looks like the tension is ratcheted up and any kind of mistake you make could result in you permanently leaving the training facility. Then we have this story concerning B Haptics, a Korean startup that is part of HTC's Vive Accelerator program. They specialize in actuator-based haptic devices, specifically fitting a bunch of those together to create a much greater sense of immersion in VR. There's a vest, there's an arm portion. The vest itself form fits via cinching, and that allows you to get full contact with 40 actuators on the vest alone, 20 in the front, 20 in the back, which according to Rode VR Scott Hayden, who tried it, wasn't the most comfortable feeling initially, but it got easier over time. Although he said 20 minutes with the vest, because there's 87 actuators in total, did start to wear a little thin in terms of comfort level overall. The Actuators are able to create multiple sensations. They can localize the feeling of like a bullet entering you, exit wounds on the back, a slashing sensation with multiple in a row lighting up. He describes trying a, an example demo with zombies gathering around him, losing control, basically that point of no return where you you know your character is dead and it literally set off his haptic suit, a firestorm of buzzing sensation all around, which he said was absolutely terrifying. They've got this listed and you can see this here. 
as a pretty expensive consumer grade device at that price i'm inclined to think it's probably better suited for virtual reality arcades where i think it would definitely come in handy i was in las vegas with my wife i think it was last fall a year ago if it wasn't a year ago it was two years ago either way we're not big gamblers but we wanted to check out vegas had an okay time but if you're not into gambling you kind of got to ask, why'd you bother going to Vegas? Well, we enjoyed it all the same. But had this virtual reality experience been there, I probably would have just hung out here the entire time. Zero Latency partnering up with MGM to create three different 30-minute VR arena game experiences, each of them accommodating up to eight players in a 2,000-square-foot arena, all of that part of the Level Up Gaming Lounge at the casino. Zero Latency CEO Tim Ruse noting, when it comes to playing games and exploring new worlds in VR, more people means more fun. Technology can often be isolating, but we are determined to continue to design games and experiences that bring people together to have mind-blowing VR adventures and forge real memories that can last a lifetime. We're excited to bring this experience to Las Vegas, our first West Coast location. Now, the experiences, one is a zombie survival game. The next, it's called Singularity. The description saying something has gone wrong in a secretive military research space station. While investigating the mystery, team must battle rogue robot, killer drones, etc. And then the last one is a puzzle adventure called Engineerium. Each playthrough gives you an individual score as well as a team score. So that classic arcade addiction formula of high score played out two different ways. Probably going to have the desired effect. The experience opens up September 8th. No word on the price, but they've started to take bookings, reservations, all of that available on the MGM website. I've got the exact specific link to the VR section in the description below. I slowly see the boundaries for the different types of VR narrowing. And I think when we get to that magic price point where it is super, super consumer friendly, I'm worried that the non-intense VR arcade experiences, the ones that basically have a Vive or multiple Vives for people to try with no real theme or, or crazy multiplayer experiences, they're probably going to have a, a real hard time. They're going to struggle. Whereas the arcades like this experience, I think they're going to be able to retain enough to make them stand out, to have an experience that you re can't recreate at home, that they're probably still going to be viable. And that's, that's a huge concern that I have for the dozens of those smaller virtual reality arcades but you had to think that had to be part of the business planning knowing that the price point was going to get there eventually to make your model not as viable in the long term well either way wish them the best and guys that is it for thursday's edition tomorrow game and friday as always cheers guys